Hello and welcome back to my channel. So I just finished up a project that I think you'd find interesting. A couple of weeks ago, I had a guy message me on Instagram, asking me if the parts that I made were only for myself or if I was open to making parts for other people. I replied that I do make the occasional setup for other amputees, but it really has to be the right set of circumstances. After all, I'm a machinist and not a licensed prosthetist. Also, I don't take insurance or Medicare, so everything is private pay. He was good with that, and over a couple of emails, he described the devices he was looking for and what his expectations for those devices were. From the email exchange, I felt that it would be a good fit and that I'd be able to come up with a decent set of designs for him that would meet his needs. From there, we set up a time and date that he could come over to my shop. Fortunately, he only lives about 40 miles away, so working together on his gadgets wasn't going to be a major inconvenience. What I've found that is very difficult about building gadgets for other people is being able to get the fit of the socket just right. Since they're the only ones that can truly know how the socket fits, the participation of the user ends up being incredibly valuable for this type of build. Enter Jim. Jim is a lifelong member of the Missing Parts Club, referring to himself as an immaculate amputee since he was born missing parts. Fortunately for him, at an early age, he was able to team up with a very talented prosthetist that was able to fabricate a couple of pairs of formed sheet metal prosthetics that acted as fixed planes that he was able to pinch against with his thumbs. He also had a formed piece that would tightly fit the base of the thumb on his dominant hand. The interior side of the piece would let him hold and write with a pen, while the anterior he could sort and pick up change. And over several years of use, he had learned that with these devices, he could meet the majority of his needs out in the real world. He usually carried with him several prosthetics that he would end up using and swapping throughout the day as tasks required. Unfortunately, his bag came up missing, so now he is in need of a new set of prosthetic devices. The first piece that he wanted to reproduce was the pen holder. Now, the awesome thing about this being a replacement piece is since he had so much time using the original prosthetic, it gave him a pile of insight as to what could be done to improve its function. So we started out by making a paper template of the socket area and transferring that shape to a piece of thin sheet metal. From there, I rough cut the profile and started forming it around a piece of tubing. Once we got the socket portion to fit Jim's thumb, we could start laying out the tool portion. We started out with the pen holder side, and once we figured out a rough shape that worked, we turned to the scoop side. After a bunch of trial and error, and hey, try this on again and see if it fits any better, we had a successful first article. From there, I transferred that pattern over to a piece of 14 gauge stainless and started roughing out a final version. On a construction like this, there is so much back and forth checking the fit that it was really helpful to have Jim in my shop guiding me as I was fabricating this piece. Once the pen holder prosthetic was complete, we started talking about everything that was wrong with his general purpose devices and how over the past 20 years or so, they had gotten a little bit bent and twisted. Still usable, but definitely not the perfect shape for what he'd been using them for. So I started out by sticking him in the press brake and flattening him out, and then forming him to the profile of his forearm in order to get a better fit. At that time, we chose to replace the fabric cuff that he used to fix them onto his arm with a pair of stainless steel cuffs that I'd weld onto the prosthetic device. Because the cuffs are hard points, they needed to be aligned perfectly to his residual limb so that during vigorous use, they don't cause hot spots. In order to get the positioning just right, what we'd end up doing is tacking the bands and waiting for them to cool, fitting them onto the forearm, checking the angle, and repeating the process until the fit was just right. Then I would fully weld them to the prosthetic and then we'd check the fit once again. Once we had a great fit on the prosthetic, we started talking about if there was anything that we could add to the prosthetic that would help him out in the real world. And he was like, well, I'm always using this part of my prosthetic as a hammer when I'm building stuff. So I was like, great, let's just weld a hammerhead to the bottom of your prosthetic. So after a bit of back and forth, we settled on a rough size and weight for the hammer to be. So I went out to the bandsaw, I grabbed a piece of 1045 round, cut a slot in it over on the milling machine, and then tacked it to the bottom of the fork. Then, as with the other pieces, we had to test the fit, tapping it on stuff, checking the angle, cutting it off, welding it back on, getting the angle to where when he would hit it on something, that it wouldn't end up torquing his wrist. I have to say, working with Jim on these gadgets was a great experience, and getting to know him and hearing about his experience growing up was awesome as well. I hope these devices serve him well and end up being everything he had in mind. That's all I have for you today. 
please like, subscribe, and share my videos. And if you have time, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching.